Hi, my name is Craig Martinez. Welcome to Gallery Bites. I am a um, instructor at American River College, former graphic designer, and also now a sculptor and painter. So I was asked to speak about any piece in here, sculpture in particular, that spoke to me, and this one behind me did. This piece is called Red Indian uh, by Yoram Wolberger. He's an American, um, he was born, an Israeli born American in 1963. He's considered a post-war contemporary artist. Um, and he uses new mediums. Um, he went to, um, he got his MFA from the new genre department of the San Francisco Art. And um, as I get into this, you'll kind of see him playing with a new genre, uh, new genre or new materials. Um, so let me just quickly read this. Um, Wolberger uses childhood toys and everyday domestic items to create his large scale sculptures, foregrounding the latent symbolism and cultural paradigms of these objects so that subtly informed Western culture. Um, so he, um, if you think about it, when I was a child, we used to use, we used to play with the plastic soldiers, Indians, and cowboys. And basically, this is one of those blown up. And um, the way those those uh, little toys were made, they were uh, um, injected plastic molds. So you take two molds, put them together inject the plastic, open them up, and you have your little figures. And when I was a kid, I always wondered why those figures would sometimes have these little ridges on them. That's because the injected plastic will seep between the two, the two pieces of the mold. And um, Yoram takes advantage of that when you see this. So as far as the composition is concerned, let's step over here, you can see that it's pretty direct, right? It's a profile. You have this line, you have these two lines coming down. If you notice that line right there goes down to his knee, this knee comes up. So there's elements of this that have some, when you see it large, um, some traditional artistic characteristics. Um, so he uses uh, a three, the, being the fact that he likes to use um, new mediums, he uses a 3D printing technique. So I'm still curious to learn how he gets such accurate detail on these. I mean, this looks like those little plastic toys. Every detail looks like it. So, and often it's very hard to take something like that and to enlarge it and to make it look proportionate, all the proportions correct, and make it look exactly like a piece that's this small. And he's able to do that on this. So there's another piece in the gallery called uh, Blue Cowboy, and behind it is a window. <clears throat> and these little pieces of what, what they were is plastic that seep into the mold act like a halo. So you can see light coming behind them. It's, it's really nice looking. Um, so let's see. Uh, oh. What these are referred to are fins, so that's what they would call them. Now, since those little cowboys and Indians and soldiers were mass produced, they would not take the time to clean these fins off. Does that make sense? And um, so now I'd like to get into why I found this uh, piece of art particularly moving. So um, there was a lot of beautiful art here in the Crocker. You have to come in and see it. And there'll be specific pieces that speak to each one of us. And the reason, isn't that really the nature of art? You'll find a piece that you like that speaks to you personally. Well, that's what this piece does for me. So I remember when I was a little boy playing with these, we'd always play, uh, we'd play army or war. Uh, we'd play cowboys and Indians. Now being, uh, native or indigenous, um, this always spoke to me. I always wanted to be the Indian. 
And even then, I really didn't know that much about Native American culture or the indigenous cultures, you know, all through the Americas. But for some reason, I was always attracted to the indigenous cultures. Um, so I wanted to be the Indian. And sometimes I was the soldier. Uh, I was never the cowboy. But so what you learn from these is very subtle. And I think a lot of it is what Yoram is addressing. So when uh, you were a soldier, you know, I learned how to point a rifle because I looked at the little thing, you know, you put one leg forward, one arm like this. Yeah, I learned how to like throw a hand grenade. I mean, from looking at those things and then you watch war movies and that's how they throw them. Um, you learn how to crawl on the ground with your rifle. So we mimicked all those things that we saw on those little tiny sculptures. And the same thing goes with when I was pretending to be the Indian fighting the cowboy. I knew how to pose because I'd see this. Um, the tomahawk, right? The spear. So what you don't realize, now I'm not saying children know what's going on. They don't. Children are, are unaware of that. And that's what makes these so powerful because these ideas, uh, you're absorbing them. Now most kids... Uh, don't really learn any more about, especially Native Americans, once they become an adult. So that is usually their last reference or a John Wayne movie. Now things are a little bit more in depth. And, uh, you know, the way they show Native Americans now is they humanize them. When I was a kid, if you bought a BB gun, they actually had a target uh, with a bullseye on it that was a Native American. So think about that now. Um, so think about this too. A soldier is a profession. A cowboy, I would say, is a trade. Native American is a race. So we were playing with two trades in an entire race, encapsulated in little plastic pieces. Um, yeah, it's a plastic Indian. Okay, that was the other thing I wanted to make. So, <clears throat> the other issue is, this is Red Indian. They call them Red Indians. You see that reference in um, uh, movies, and it was considered derogatory. Uh, the cowboys, or the soldiers were green. That's their uniform. A red Indian is referring to their skin color. So if you think about that, right? Um, and I never got that, because I always thought they looked brown like me. But that's besides the point. Um, I had a couple points here I want to review. I don't want to get too far out there. Um, so what I noticed was, and I think this is what Yoram is doing, I saw a documentary on people who um, they, they just fill their house with their, um, there's a term, I can't think of it now. They just collect every, hoarders, everything. Their house is a terrible mess, just a bad mess. We go in there and we can see it. Well, the hoarder can't see it. It looks normal to them. What they do to help them see from a different uh, perspective is they take photographs of it, take the hoarder out of there and show them photographs of the mess. And suddenly they see it in a different light. It's called the objectified. When they're in the house and they're surrounded by it, it's just what you know. You're like in it. But when you're out of it and you look at it from a different point of view, it's objectified. That's what Yoram is doing like this. As a kid, you're enmeshed in this. He's taken this blown it up, taking it out of context. He's objectified it, basically. And so your reference now is completely different. You're not playing with it like a child. You're looking at it, and it has a meaning, or it's telling you something. That's why, for me, this really spoke to me, because I remember as a kid doing this, and as, as I grew up as an adult, I started recognizing, like, um, you know, the simple messages we're receiving from a million different things. And I think that's where Yoram has picked toys in particular to show how toys 
really teach us a lot of subtle uh, messages as we grow up. I mean, let's play war. Well, play war, right? Let's play cowboys and Indians and we kill each other. Okay, it's kids having fun, but if you think about it, <laughs> it's kind of dark too. Um, and I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to read too much into it, what a kid's doing. But the, the reality is, is they are picking up on those messages. And um, I think this successfully conveys that. And just compositionally, it's pretty nice. And the fact that it has these fins sticking out, it adds texture and color uh, to the sculpture itself. What I like is when you look at the, the face of this sculpture, it's very vague, right? It's very impersonal. Um, and it has the stereotypical Native American, you know, the uh, uh, regalia, the, uh, these these, uh, the leather um, pants with the tassels coming off of them and they're moving out because it's in action. The knife, the loincloth, here is the, uh, are the arrows, okay? And, it, and if you get a chance to come in and see it, if you look from the back, you see the same sort of details. And if you notice, the face is just as vague on that side. So, um, Again, with the, the, the soldiers, they're vague enough to where I could put myself in place of that soldier. Whereas this, <laughs> putting myself in place of a race. And it's vague enough to, that anybody can be Native American. So, having said all that, this is why I, I like this sculpture in particular. Also, the blue cowboy is very beautiful. And um, that is pretty much what I have to say, unless there's any questions. questions from us. Okay. So I'd like to thank you very much for your time. Please come into the Crocker. They have an amazing collection of art and um, I'm sure you'll find something that you relate to the way I found this to be very intriguing.